I'm Anna. I'm Ben. We're on to say welcome to our channel. They're watching 86, season one, episode seven. Last episode ended in a uh, slightly romantically embarrassing way. Yes. For Lana. On one end. Yeah. On, on one person's end. Don't really know how the other person would feel Start about of this that. episode, we see Shin and blushing he, and hiding under the covers. He's yeah. Blushing. All right. I don't you ready? Think so. Yeah. <laughs> Sweet. Fireworks? Man. I can't believe Daya died. <laughs> I was just getting over it. Thanks. I have not gotten over it. Obviously, Anju has not gotten over it either. And he's talking to her. Hmm. Wow, that's a beautiful shot. They have a big mission coming up that isn't necessarily the safest thing, and they don't have the ability to get reinforcements. They think it's a decoy already or a mm -hmm. trap. Yeah. It's, we get such an emphasis of Karenna looking at Shin. And her feelings Shin. about what's developing there. Yeah. I feel like we're going to learn more about Karenna at some point. How she first developed her feelings for Shin. I don't know. I'm scared that that character is going to do something possibly risky or bad because of these feelings. Uh, obviously, we had them leave the room and Daya went after them a few episodes ago in their upset over the kind of relationship that's being forged over the parade. But I'm worried that something is going to be done by that character that might end up being mm. a risk that shouldn't have been taken. Uh, recklessness, maybe. Supply order. The fireworks! Oh. Oh. She sent them. They have a what mascot. In the fuck. <gasps> Looks like a fatter Teletubby. The order of events this episode are really interesting. Mm -hmm. The festivities. Did you see the little headgear that made it look like the mascot? Oh, with the red wine and just the eating meat. The gorging yourself. More than understandable. <laughs> たとえそれが落ち様の力に I don't want it to come in a form of Lena making empty promises to the rest of Spearhead because she is operating on faulty information. Oh, I love it though. 
追っかけて誰も話しかけてこないわ。どうしたの？向こうに今日新作のおやつを。Oh my god！ またねえねえな。Annette has it rough <笑>。No. She's not busy. Dance with his voice. <laughs> the fireworks that she sent. Kirebishone. Yoruba Prakte, Kito Kukimo Kire de Shokara. But as you might shun him to Iduma show it at Nimo, meet him right at the skeleton. Sumimase, Mata timing the Varakata de Sne. Joho Garno, Hajimetes. Oh, Yorokonde to Mimasio. Who? That's why Anju is crying. What a great line. Yup. God, this is amazing. The audio mixing is so good. Mm. When we die. Five chills. Before the upcoming mission, I hate that that was said. Will you remember me? I love the way that they depict time within 86. So good, isn't it? Tell her. Tell her what? 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 Tell her
Is there no one else fighting? Is like everyone else dead? They've been marked for execution? It's because they were all about to be done? But they were all surviving. Jesus fucking Christ. で、それでも死なない始末に追えない奴が最後に行き着く場所がここ。戦隊員を全滅するまで戦わせるのがこの隊の目的。守らせるためではなく、死なせるために戦わせるなんて、そんなもの虐殺ではありませんか。復讐
like at at first what starts as just blind optimism and the lack of realization of the severity of what's going on in terms of like you didn't even ask her names right Mm -hmm. that's one thing but when you have somebody as motivated as i'm not going to let one more person die i am going to get reinforcements set out i it's definitely been assured i'm going to go out of my way to send you guys fucking fireworks with every dime that i have that being met and directed towards the people who legitimately have 99.9 percent of a chance of dying is so torturous and it is so fucked and every episode i'm like like at the start i was like okay i want spearhead as many people as we can to survive and us to meet Lena in person and be able to be safe and out of the war and complete and every episode that we've gone on further i feel like i'm having to ask for less for them like it it feels more unrealistic now than ever before to be like i just want them all to make it out and be okay and i'm closer to like i just want them to like just to them to have some semblance of peace of mind, regardless of when or where they go. It's fucked. Okay. Serious, serious plot topic right now, and I actually mean that. What Lena learns in this episode from the mouths of the 86, from the mouths of Spearhead, who Spearhead is, who they acknowledge that they are, are those that would be capable enough to lead a rebellion. They are the survivors. They are looked at as heroes by the other 86. Jerome is of a position where he would not only know what is being done here and that there no replacements are going to come until all of them are dead, but he chooses to give spearhead to Lena, who he knows Interesting. who his, who Lena's father is. Yeah. He knows the ideals this person holds. The possibility of crafting a person who would lead a rebellion it would on be the Alba side of things. Super five head because of the idea of Jerome is still would still be ensuring his own safety mm-hmm. by playing by being able to play dumb if yeah. anything would come of it especially because of the lack of experience lena has i, I get what you're saying it- with it i at the moment i don't want to give any fucking credit to jerome but what you have a hundred percent my support on is in how fucked up of a situation it is at the end of the day we do have the strongest and best and most capable of all right like he's literally I obviously I don't know for sure Jerome's intentions, but he has crafted a situation where he is completely hands off. He's like, I'm not giving you new stuff because I can't. I'm not helping you in any way. Mm -hmm. But he knows her and he knows what this unit really is. Why else would he put them together? You know, other than a make or break moment. Are you going to be able to achieve what your father was not? Your father was still looking at things with a slightly skewed vision. He wasn't completely looking at the 86 as human when he did his little flyover in his helicopter. Mm -hmm. Can you? I still am feeling that about Jerome. That he's like, hands off. I'm going to put you in a position that's either going to make or break what your potential is for this country for this republic that they are in i uh it's just it just feels so impossible it feels like there are two nations fighting each other and we are an island of 20 people and like you know what i mean it's like i don't know what you do like i i like what do you do if you're lena here right now obviously you have more information for than before I imagine Lena's just going to go up to, rather than plotting initially, like, how to do something big or save things or do something different. I can't even fucking think of how you'd start to think about that shit. I imagine she's going to go and confront Jerome about it. Mm -hmm. But I don't know what comes of that, what follows, what ideas Lena could have that could really change the, any type of tide that's happening, you know? Right. 
Um, something I want to get into at some point, and you can decide when you think it would be best to, is I do want to go... There was a line where we were told which... I think it was three people in the Spearhead unit have Alba blood. Like, mm. are actually, like... And that is why they've been treated the way that they have been by eighty six other 86. Yeah. And I, I really love when stories feel even more so fleshed out in terms of, like, the raw look at humanity aspect. Like... Even within a confined group of people who are within some minority or an ostracized group where they have been labeled as something other than the one group, yeah. there's still, it, it's almost human nature to then want to find, like, get your power back in some way. There are going to be people who feel that the only way they can get their power back or their sense of control or pride by beating down on whatever else they can see with their eyesight, you know, yeah. in their eye line as a weaker person to target or just a person to target that they are able to target and see some significance about them that is a, a label of sorts that they can target. Yeah. Um, the people, I believe, were Anju, Haruto, and Shin. Um, interesting, like, obviously, this episode, we could even say it, like, Shin and Anju both are marked obviously in different ways seeming mm-hmm. like different ways and probably different reasons because we have seen shins but it's interesting like i would imagine that the reason anju has what she does on her back is because of her blood so okay shin being involved in this makes me even more uh, slightly confused about whether his brother is truly like his brother or more so he was taken into a family mm. it, just by we get the idea that he was raised by an alba priest yeah yeah interesting there because we would think by the time that we saw him in flashbacks he was a child he was still within the walls and I'm trying to figure out where that time period was that he was raised before he entered into the I mean the know, whole fighting. Like, the whole like Ray being like you you were the reason. Something mom, happened yeah. to our parents and then after his brother gets sent to war, mm-hmm. he's then taken care of and raised by an Alba priest. But that would still mean nothing in terms of having the blood of yeah. we get I I thought we went back and looked at the fact that shin's brother said that they actually came from the empire like yeah, the parents yeah, yeah. lineage wise uh-huh. i don't know if it's gonna lead to anything okay i think it's definitely interesting and it might but it's gonna be hard to figure out what based off of what evidence we have at the moment i feel like we're just starting yeah. to get more anju's I... the least surprising out of these oh, three characters that sure. have been picked here we fucked up with Anju's hair color early on. I mean, it looks it was, so, yeah. but it's just like slightly more purple, obviously. Man, <laughs> what? We got a line that was like, uh, Corinna knows the very worst in terms of this shit, right? Like the treatment? Yeah. What the fuck was that? Like, what is that? I, like, I. Right, exactly. We have this idea that. Kaya is the one that first brought it up to Lena because mm-hmm. Kaya had been treated a certain way. Anju's literally marked. Yeah. But Karena is the one identified in this episode of having maybe seen or been a, uh, a victim to some of the worst treatment. Yeah. I, I, I thought it was really interesting. And it's also like Karena's disposition or like hatred it's odd, like, it's not as severe as knows the very worst to me yet, so I'm interested to see more of Karenna, for sure. I think that Karenna is an incredibly, actually, very likable character. And Definitely. An understandable character. I think that the place that they keep her on this, like, fence of being, like, I care about other people, but I'm also still, like, a teenage girl, and I have a crush, and I'm a little jealous, but I also know I'm gonna die, and I I don't want someone else to get hurt, and, like, I don't want Shin to be alone, so I, like, part of her kind of likes that Shin has this person to talk to, that he enjoy, he seemingly might enjoy talking to for when she dies, his heart will, might be carried by someone, 
But there's also that, like, but she also has affection for him. But it's also, like, saving them, right? Mm -hmm. Everybody there has that trust and confidence that when they go, Shin will ensure that they actually go. But who could do that for Shin, Mm -hmm. right? And... Within that, Lena comes to mind, but hopefully, right. like Lena said, nobody's gonna die, and I hope yeah. nobody will, but there's this fucking new weapon, and I don't fucking know, man. Mm-hmm. Uh, I also could be misreading um, Karenna's feelings for Shin. Like, it could be more of an idolization crush, like a, this is my savior in this world yeah. person. Um, but I do, I think that her character so far has been more realistically written this episode housed my favorite dialogue within 86 so far i don't have like one instance i'm even talking about there's several like what one of the first instances of it was in reference to mourning everybody and giving andrew the peace of mind the fireworks were used as a sort of gun salute Mm -hmm. that was beautiful she was finally able to cry god damn it why did they have to kill and the fact that like the reason that she first gained affection for daya being that he asked her if she was growing out her hair because her hair is beautiful yeah. and not because she was like obviously trying to hide something yeah, yeah. i love the line of if even if you go to the gallows you can choose how you're going to walk up those steps yeah. like holy right. shit he uh, Raiden specifically had some really great lines in this episode. Mm-hmm. I think that was really cool to kind of give him... We get this idea that he's almost like a co-captain of sorts. Like, he really is... When Anju and Kren are in the shower, it's really like Shin and Raiden don't, like, feel like they want to hurt her and say this to her. Yeah. He's the one that talks to her mainly in the place of Shin when Shin's tired. Mm-hmm. Um, And for him to be given such, like powerful i'm so like, happy I'm the about one that's it. relaying this information that's gonna hurt you he has this like big brother energy that i really like i really love his character if and when he dies <laughs> i will be very upset by this i would have assumed it would have been shin to talk about it or even karenna based mm-hmm. off of the shower conversation to actually give that dialogue and i'm so glad but that he's wasn't the taking case. it he's taking the burden away from them uh-huh. because none of them want to say it none yep. of them want to hurt her and that's so big of him it basically shows that he's willing to like take this hard conversation off of his friends and the people he loves and be like i'll do it for you yeah i will tell her i will hurt her for all of us so that she knows the truth because we can't keep this from anymore her anymore because all of them are starting to care for her or at least acknowledge that she is genuine in her desire for the idealistic ideas that her flag actually represents I love the way of, like, the, the, it's every episode they do it, but, like, how they're fuck like, how the, like, they deliver the timing to us. I think it's so poetic. It's such a choice. I also love, like, in the box with the fireworks, you see some stickers and shit of that horrifying mascot. And, uh, please enjoy this with every, or please enjoy these. Please enjoy these with everyone. Mm-hmm. Do you think that that was originally animated in English, or do you think that they painted over it and wrote it? Oh, honestly, that's I mean, a great three color light. Like they would have had to done it to everything. Spark. That's really interesting Melon because soda. sometimes when there's something on a screen, and you would think if it was a dub or subtitles, they oh, would well, like put you I'm know translations. Yeah, of this things. is definitely animated. I wasn't thinking. I was like, I just reverted. Sorry, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> you reverted yeah, back to, to a, like a your... stupider Ben. <laughs> your uh, factory settings. Yeah, black dress, Lena. <laughs> Favorite thing, never go back. And that's like, you look like you're in mourning. And my thought is, all of the <laughs> men are basically in dark colors and black. Why we gotta judge Lena for her choice of dress? Mm-hmm. Gosh, geez. Like, get some fashion sense. And black her is always in. Fiancés, god damn it. One of her fiancés that she runs away from. Mm-hmm. Alright, I think that's all I have you. Um... Just one one more quick thing that is probably going to stick with me a little bit after this episode, just in terms of, like, 
scene processing. I think that shower scene between Anju and Karenna, and I'm not trying to be funny with this by being like, oh, the shower scene between the two. Like, I think that scene and the content of it emotionally is going to stick with me a little bit after I leave this room and after we are done discussing this episode. The idea that Karenna's like, Anju, you've never showered with anyone Mm -hmm. before. And that after Daya's death, does she finally shower with someone? And, it, like, the vulnerability, the... At what point did I start growing my hair out because of covering my back, or, you know, or because it was beautiful? At what point did I almost maybe start to love myself more or feel comfortable with people again? And f- from Anju's, like, point of view, it, it's like, yeah, you need comfort for what happened, in a vulnerable moment but it also is obvious like a a massive sign of trust Mm -hmm. and that in itself is great i think another thing that it does is the fireworks scene there was a line of dialogue being that this is what the people that died like the people that died would absolutely love this yep and i think daya would absolutely love that anju was making this choice here of being like of almost being vulnerable with both herself and someone else. I'm with you. So, yeah. All right. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Please like, comment, and subscribe. And we hope to see you next time.